Hello everyone, I'm George from Ireland, so carry on telling about Warren Hastings around the front of his house. So I thought I'll probably never come here again. Take this opportunity, more picturesque this, and it looks like we're in a deep England context. We're actually not that far from London, about 17 miles from Marble Arch, which may be the western beginning of London, or maybe 18 miles from Trafalgar Square, that statue of Charles I, an equestrian one. All measurements from London are measured from the base of that statue. So, um, yeah, you, you see what it's like. This will obviously be a more a more modern addition over here with, with the Greek columns out the front. So um, anyway, when he died, um, I'm not sure who inherited this because he never wed. He had no children. Don't think he took an Indian mistress. So a sleeping dictionary would have helped him learn Urdu. It was really Urdu more than Hindu. He was learning because... Um, the, the Muslims were a slight majority in Bengal. Of course, they mostly spoke Bengali, but uh, the uh, the British Raj was extending into what we now call Uttar Pradesh or Bihar, the presidency of, of Fort William, because the East India Company had three presidencies. One was Fort William or Bengal, they sometimes call it. Another one is um, Fort George, um, which uh, was Madras or Chennai as the city has been called for 20 plus years. And then um, Bombay presidency, that's well Mumbai now, but, but that included Maharashtra up into Gujarat, Sindh, I'm not sure wherever else, maybe a bit further south. But remembering that the East India Company began on the littoral, just a few ports, pimples on the, on the face of India, but gradually extended its tentacles into the hinterland. So um, this is what uh, imperialism can buy you. And he doesn't seem to have been um, uh, troubled by qualms of conscience over his uh, conduct. Um, and uh, the, the, the shareholders of the East India Company, they were most satisfied with, uh, with what he was doing because it, it worked to their emolument. So as a close confidant of, of Robert Clive, had to organize military campaigns despite having no formal military training. Remember the French were considerable presence in, in India and it was touch and go whether they would prevail. They could have easily thrashed the Britons and driven them out of the subcontinent, in which case India would have fallen under French dominion, but that didn't transpire. Um, so he was good at building alliances, um, he was audacious when he needed to be, circumspect at other times, a good man-manager, a shrewd judge of character, and able at politicking. Um, so he's accused of various things, um, huge-scale peculation, um, and um, unlawfully killing uh, an Indian prince, uh, and so forth. But as I say, um, he was cleared of all the accusations that were leveled against him. I'll show you a bit of the vista. Now, you can't see the, the, the Thames now because of these trees behind. I'm presuming they weren't there when he was here because the River Thames is just beyond that. So um, this uh, immaculately kept lawn um, slopes down to the, to the uh, river. And, of course, people used to come and go by a river that was often faster than the muddy roads, the turnpike trusts were only just um, improving them in his lifetime. So although the, the, the river froze solid in, in, in the winter, Back then, the climates were more extreme. Um, moreover, the, the, wind, the, the river Thames is very narrow here. It's about 50 metres across, so freezes very easily. Whereas when it's much wider towards the sea, it won't freeze. Of course, the tides and the waves will break it up. So um, that is just a, a small um, uh, addition to what I was saying about this chap who could speak fluent um, Persian. And uh, he had Sir William Jones, that uh, judge of the High Court of Calcutta, um, found the Asiatic society. They took guidance from um, Hindu pandits and uh, Islamic ulema about um, codes of laws, about Islamic law, about uh, Hindu law. And he took the liveliest interest in the Bhagavad Gita and various other Hindu classics. So he was outspoken in his admiration for Indian civilization, recognizing that it was due a great deal of respect, as was far more ancient than that of uh, Western civilization. Um, uh, anyway, so that is a bit more about um, Sir William Jones. Thank you so much for your liberality and donating to me. Please keep it coming. Otherwise, this channel wouldn't exist. George Callahan 79 at gmail.com. That's on PayPal. There's all small letters. Remember, Callahan is spelled C A L L A G H A N. Right. Thank you and toodaloo.